Hey guys, welcome to Christmas dinner prep. So right now I'm in the car. I'm getting ready to run to the store just because I need to get a few ingredients for desserts. Um, I pretty much have all my ingredients for the actual dinner and I filmed a grocery haul that includes those ingredients. So you guys have probably already seen that by now. But yeah, I'm going to run to the store, grab a few ingredients, and then I'm going to come back and actually start cooking today just because um, on Christmas we usually spend most of the day at my mom's house and do all the presents and all that stuff over there we have a brunch kind of situation going on after that and then we just chill and hang out for a few hours before we come home so we usually don't get home until like two or three in the eve in the afternoon so i wanted to kind of start doing some of the prep work today so that tomorrow all i have to do is pop things in the oven um and i don't have like a full schedule of cooking tomorrow so i'm gonna go ahead and run to the store and then i'll meet you guys back at the house to start the cooking okay so i just finished at the store but i realized that i didn't tell you guys what i'm making so for the main entree i'm making um barbecue pulled pork so i have like a pork roast and then for the side dishes i'm going to be making macaroni and cheese green beans and sweet potatoes and then i'm also going to be doing some cornbread and for dessert a pound cake and possibly some kind of red velvet dessert like some red velvet brownies or something like that so let's go home and start cooking all right guys so here is my main entree for Christmas dinner so the first step is going to be just to remove it from its packaging and put it in some vinegar water just to clean it really well before I go ahead and make the seasoning rub for it And now I'm just going to season it. I'm going to put some salt. And this is pink Himalayan salt. I'm also going to do some brown sugar. Because this is kind of like a spice rub. So you want a little bit of that sweetness along with the spice. I'm doing some chili powder. Some black pepper. Some onion powder. Garlic powder. Some complete seasoning some Tony Satchery's Creole seasoning and I'm gonna finish it off with some mustard before I rub all the spices and seasonings in one tip I do have for you though is that if you're going to use all the seasonings that I used then you can probably skip the salt just because those seasonings also have salt in them so what you can do is just not put the salt in from the beginning and then at the end when you taste it if it needs a little extra salt then add it then because you can always add more salt but it's really hard to take it away once it's in there so that's my little tip so I'm just taking the time to rub this in really well you want the flavor to be all through this meat and remember this is going to be pulled pork so it's going to penetrate the inside of it too because we're going to pull it and let the flavor get all through it so yeah just rub it in really well and then I'm going to put it into a glass baking dish and cover it with foil pop it into the fridge and it, it's ready to go for tomorrow I also went ahead and baked the cake on Christmas Eve as well and honestly that was as far as I got so let's go ahead and hop into Christmas day
So this has been marinating since yesterday, so I'm about to pop this in the oven on 350 for probably two to three hours. And now I'm gonna get started on peeling the potatoes for the potato salad. Now I'm starting on the baked beans and this process is pretty self-explanatory but the one thing I will say is that I added garlic and onion powder to it and that was the first time that I did that and I kind of regretted it so maybe leave that out if you're going to make this or how I corrected it once I um, did it and realized I didn't like the flavor was I added some barbecue sauce but I, I did that off camera so if you decide to do the garlic powder and onion powder then do some barbecue sauce too but if, if not then just leave that out. So the potatoes are boiled and drained and I'm just waiting on them to cool down so I can make the salad and in the meantime I'm waiting on the water to boil for the macaroni and cheese and this time I'm just using normal elbow noodles. This time I'm not going to do any smoked gouda. I have regular sharp cheddar. I have some extra sharp cheddar and then also have some mild cheddar and some Kobe Jack. So these are the cheeses that I'm going to use in the macaroni and cheese today. And all of them are prepped except this one which needs to be sliced. I'm not gonna worry about shredding it just because it's unnecessary. I almost forgot I was making sweet potatoes, so I probably should have done these sooner, but I'm gonna go ahead and peel these, get them sliced and into a pan so they can go into the oven. So I'm gonna peel, rinse it off, and then slice it into medallions. And then into the bacon dish. So I'm just gonna repeat this process for all of the sweet potatoes.
Now I'm gonna go in with some butter, cinnamon, white sugar, nutmeg, and a little bit of vanilla extract. Okay, so I don't see myself adding vanilla at this stage, but I know I added some, so you can add it at this stage. I must have added it later. But yeah, so this is going in the oven, and the oven is still set to 350 because that's what I'm cooking the meat on. So I'm just putting it in there on the bottom rack. Now I'm going to start working on the roux for the macaroni and cheese and in order to build it I'm starting off with some vegetable oil. You can do oil or butter and then to that I'm going to add some flour and you want to try to do equal parts butter and flour. And then just stir those together until you get a smooth consistency. All right, so once we get it smooth, the next step is to start creating the sauce by adding in some milk. You can do milk, you can do half and half, you can do heavy cream, you can do a mixture of all three of them, but I'm just going in with some milk today. And I'm adding it in pretty slowly so that I don't get too many lumps in the sauce. And I'm also gonna go ahead and switch to a whisk just because it makes it easier to control the texture. Once you get to the texture that you're looking for and you have it completely smooth, then you can just go ahead and start adding in the cheeses. And remember that the cheese is gonna thicken this sauce by a lot, like probably three or four times. So you want the sauce to be pretty thin before you start to add the cheese in. And then if you realize that once you've added in your cheese, it's still too thick, you can definitely go back in with more milk and adjust the thickness of it that way. And I somehow lost the end of the footage of me making the cheese sauce, but of course I seasoned it. You can do salt, pepper, Typically that's really all you need is salt and pepper. And then from there I'm going to put the noodles into a glass baking dish and then pour the cheese sauce on top. Top with more cheese and pop it into the oven. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and boil some eggs for the potato salad, and then once these come out, we'll be ready to mix it all together. I wanted to take a minute to check on the pork roast just to see how it's coming along, and I took a fork and stabbed it just to see how much resistance there was, and there was still quite a bit at this point. I think this was about an hour and a half in. So I'm just gonna go ahead, cover it back up, and pop it back into the oven so it can continue to cook until it's ready. The macaroni and cheese is coming along, but it's not quite ready yet, so I'm gonna give it a few more minutes to continue to cook. I went ahead and pulled out the baked beans just to check on them and they're basically done when they come out of the can so this is up to you but I wanted mine to be a little bit thicker so I'm going to stir them up and then just put them back into the oven for a little while longer. But like I said, this is one of those things that's preference so if you like yours a little bit thinner, you can take it out sooner. If you like it a little bit thicker, you can let them cook a little bit longer.
getting there, but it's still not completely tender. So what I'm gonna do is kind of pull it apart a little bit to help it along. You can see it is coming apart, but it's like the fat on the inside that's kind of keeping it from separating effortlessly. Actually, the fork is going through it pretty easily at this point. So what I'm probably gonna have to do is pull, go ahead and pull it and um, get rid of some of this fat and like the more fibrous tissue. So you have the meat itself and then you have these tougher parts that are like fat and just more tough tissue. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish separating all the meat from all of these parts. And like you can see the meat is pretty much done. It's coming apart. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish separating it and then we will be pretty much done. My original plan for this um, pork roast was to barbecue it, but or to add barbecue sauce to it and make it barbecue flavored. But now that I've tasted it, this broth is so flavorful and is so good and it doesn't even need anything else. So I'm just gonna leave it just like this, um, just because it's seasoned so well already. And I'm just gonna serve it this way. So this is completely done. The only other thing is the cornbread. I'm about to pull that out of the oven, put some honey butter on top and then dinner's ready. All right guys, so here's the entire spread. We got the sweet potatoes. We have the potato salad, the macaroni and cheese, the cornbread, the pulled pork, the baked beans, and the green beans. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And of course, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Ooh, that's what we do. Falling